All right, thank you for coming again and welcome back. Today we're looking at this beautiful, I think it's beautiful, Greco made in Japan, EG500 in a nice black finish, ebony I guess you might call it. And uh, it's just a really cool guitar. Made in Japan guitars started out, I think, in my opinion, really terribly. Um, some of those early Made in Japan guitars from like the 60s, I had a few of those and, and, and they were bad. As a matter of fact, my first guitar ever was one of those Made in Japan Taisko. And it wasn't bad considering the rest of the uh, market at the time. But when they hit the 70s, especially like the late 70s and early 80s, their quality got really good. And this is a an example of that, this is a 1981 Greco EG500 Superpower, and I just think it's got a lot of mojo. I had to do a lot of work on it. It came as just a, a shell, basically a husk project. But, you know, um, I made it my own, and it plays great, and it sounds great. So let's take a deeper dive into this thing and, and talk a little bit about guitars made in Japan. I do want to say that I got a lot of the information on this and, and history of Japanese guitars from VintageJapanGuitars.com. It has a wealth of information there that you might not just find on Wikipedia or other sites. And there, there's a, a seller on Reverb as well as he has a shop in Australia, of all places, of Japanese vintage pedals and guitars and it's called mojostompboxes.com I recently ordered a uh, a 78 Greco from him uh, so hopefully that will be here soon and I can I can put that under the microscope and review it as well so yeah it's just a, a really nice player and you know I've been through a few made in Japan guitars that have come and gone I actually tried an Orville from the 90s, and that company, um, Matsumoku, I think it was, that was licensed, officially licensed to do Gibson design guitars, it wasn't that great, frankly. I was disappointed with it, and I, I liked this Greco quite a bit more. It had a laminate uh, photo flame, I guess it is, uh, finish, that it just didn't look right. Not only that, it was peeling away from the... Uh, guitar and it played okay and it sounded pretty good but it just it was lacking because of that photo flame finish and the actual finish popping off because oftentimes photo flames are like paisley finishes um, they don't do well under a poly or a nitro and they start cracking and things but without further ado let's let's dive into this guitar and see what's going on here with made in japan grecos thanks all right, the Greco Superpower EG500 from 1981. This particular guitar was purchased by me on eBay some time ago as a husk. Husk being a term described basically a bare bones, often down to just the neck and body of a guitar. In addition to the neck and body, this also included the output jack plate, tuners, and truss rod cover. I had to add pickups, Pickup rings, three-way switch, bridge, tailpiece, knobs, and all the electronics. So it was truly a project and a bit of a gamble, considering it wasn't at all playable. Greco Guitars, distributed by Conde Shokai Corporation, was established in 1948. Conda Shokai is what I meant to say, is still a prominent distributor of musical instruments. They introduced the Greco brand to the market in the 60s, I believe. Apparently, the Beatles' 1966 tour in Japan significantly impacted Greco's projects, prompting the launch of a Fender Telecaster replica, as well as a Hofner bass similar to Paul McCartney's famous bass. In 1969, Led Zeppelin toured Japan and provided a huge impact on Greco. They began replicating Les Pauls, SGs, Strats, and other various models. 
As rock and roll bands began to tour in Japan more frequently in the 70s, demand for USA guitars grew, and Greco, among other Japanese manufacturers, capitalized on this by creating more affordable replicas of popular USA-made guitars. Kanda Shokai mainly handled the marketing and distribution of guitars. They weren't manufacturers. And they used two subcontractors. These companies were Matsumoku Industrial Corp. And in the first half of the 70s, they handled things. And Fujijin Gaki, which produced guitars beginning around 1974 and 75. So the two of those companies were the main manufacturers here. And that continued until the 90s for Fuji Gen Gaki. Fuji Gen also manufactured Ibanez for overseas markets, and the Greco brand was for the Japanese markets. So the Japanese regard them as twin brands, since they're basically the same thing, came out of the same manufacturer. The goal for Greco was to create a guitar superior in quality than their Gibson counterparts and to purposefully create a slimmer neck profile, more suited for smaller Japanese hands. For myself, with pretty average hands, I tend to gravitate to the slimmer 60s style neck profile as well. Among the first Les Paul copies was the EG360 Custom that was interestingly modeled off of Paul Kossoff's Les Paul Burst from the band Free. As they only had a picture of the front of the guitar, they did not know what the back looked like. As a result, they did a burst on the back and the neck. EG series indicated the actual price of the guitars. So the EG500 was 500 yen, the EG800 was 800 yen, and so on. Features, price, and finish, of course, also played into the model number and thus the price of the instruments. In the later 70s, they began making neck-through designs, dubbed Go Series. And in 1981, the company started discussions with Fender and became the officially licensed Fender Japan in 1982. As Gibson partnered with the Matsumoku company to officially license Gibson designs branded Orville by Gibson, production of Greco EG Superpower Les Paul replicas began to wane. So I really enjoy this guitar, and I've loaded it with my own pickups that I had as spares, and that being a Seymour Duncan JB in the bridge, and I honestly can't remember what I put in the neck, but I wired them up um, so they would be out of phase in the middle position, giving it that Peter Green quacky nasally tone that I really enjoy a lot. This guitar plays and sounds really nice. It's chambered, so some of those um, EG500s and the lower models were chambered in this era. And I don't mind that at all because it's lighter around the shoulder. So it's quite comfortable to play standing up with a strap. So I hope you enjoyed the little overview and information about this particular guitar. So thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. Take care of yourself.